You can hear that I am more a sociologist than a preacher, so it is an honor this morning that she has asked me to talk with you. But in my, I come really out as a sister in Christ. I come as one who loves and serves God, one who in everything that I do, I'm trying earnestly to put him first and to be his servant. And so this morning I want to thank Lady Felton, I want to thank Bishop Felton, I want to thank Bishop Morris and Lady Morris for their generosity in inviting me here to this wonderful Kingdom Women's Conference. It was a joy to be with all of you yesterday and to see so many women out celebrating the Kingdom. And I want to give Lady Felton all of the honor for her leadership in that and Lady Morris for getting this conference started. And I'm very grateful to Mother Swinton and to Evangelist Wallace and to Sister Elliot who have taken such great care of me during my visit. Thank God for them. And so this morning the theme is the greatest of these is love. And I found an example of agape love, the love that puts others first in a surprising place. You know the film that Viola Davis just did, The Woman King? Yes. I, and that was such a celebration of black women. They weren't Christians, but you know she was an, there was an example there of agape love because she plays General Naniska, who is about to be made woman king. She's about to be elevated. But her secret daughter has been captured by the enemy. And the king has forbidden her to go to rescue this young woman who he doesn't even know is her daughter. He's forbidden her and she has this choice to make does she jeopardize her opportunity to become woman king or does she save her daughter? Does she put her own interests first or does she put the interests of her daughter first? And she serves the interests of her daughter. She goes to save her and her courage is an example to the women warriors, the goji who follow her. And they go with her and they rescue this young woman in an act of agape love, in an act of putting the needs of someone else ahead of our own. Not only does she succeed in rescuing her daughter, but in fact, the king does make her woman king. And when we are faithful, when we are faithful, in putting the needs of others first, when we are faithful in acts of agape love, our king, the ultimate king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, he will honor our faithful service. Because Jesus is the essence of love. Jesus is the one who shows us the way. He is the one who empowers us to love. And he shows us that love on the cross. And he tells us that he has saved us for that purpose. In Luke 9, verses 23 to 26, he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Take up his cross sometimes. Ladies, sisters, take up our cross every other day. Take up our cross weekly. Take up our cross once a year. No, take up our cross daily. It is our daily calling to take up our cross and follow Jesus. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses her life for Jesus will save it. What good is it for us to gain the whole world, the cars, the houses, the money, the, the, the prestige, what good is it for us to gain the whole world and lose 
our very souls. Jesus says, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him, of her, when he comes in glory and in the glory of the Father and the glory of the angels. But if we act in agape love, if we take up that cross daily, then he will proclaim us before the Father, before the angels, he will reward us. And Paul tells us in Ephesians 2.10, we are created in Christ to do good works. We are created to serve. We are created to act. We are created to be the salt and light in this fallen world. We are created to be ambassadors for Christ, to do the good works which God has prepared in advance for us to walk in. I don't know what your cross is today, but I watched my beloved sister widowed at an early age with three children, raising them by herself, serving God faithfully. And I saw him be there for her, making a way out of no way, providing money when there seemed to be none. I saw him with her, increasing her faith. I saw him with her, raising three children who love him, serve him, put him first, on fire for God. When we serve faithfully, he gives us the strength to bear that cross. When we serve him faithfully, he brings us through. He brings us through. So today, if you're struggling to buy groceries, especially with prices so high, if you're worried about paying the rent, or just can't make ends meet, be sure that if you put him first, if you act in love, if you serve him, he will bring you through. Maybe you just got a scary diagnosis from the doctor. Maybe you have an unfair boss at work. Maybe you have difficulty in your marriage or with your children. He will still bring you through if you are faithful. You know, think about Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was enslaved. And her master, through a brick, hit her in the head, did permanent damage. But you know, God used that suffering as a blessing. Because when she would black out, she would have visions from him. As a result of that head injury, she would unexpectedly black out. While she was rescuing people from enslavement, she would black out. But she never feared because he was with her and because he used that suffering to bless her. And he brought her back time and time and time again. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, he will do the same for us. He will do the same for us. We come to hear the word, to be charged, not just to bear our burdens, but to serve, to serve, to be his servants when we leave here. And you can be sure of this. There is an enemy of our souls. Satan will attack us when we serve faithfully. Satan will attack us when we stand in love. Satan will try to throw us off when we serve with agape love because we cannot avoid spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. We cannot avoid it. Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18, finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. He says, when we have done all, we must stand our ground. No matter what Satan throws at us, we stand our ground. No matter what lies he tells, no matter what hurt he brings to us, we stand our ground. This morning we prayed for that spiritual armor, that we, we would stand with our with belt of truth buckled all around our waist, with our feet fitted with the readiness comes from the gospel of peace that we would stand with the helmet of salvation, with the breastplate of righteousness, with the sword of the Spirit. God equips us and we stand against Satan. We don't come just to be happy, we come to fight. 
We come to fight. We come to fight in an age where people are denying God. We come to fight in an age where people don't even believe he exists. You know, in the Bible it says, in the prophets it says, the people were saying, where is God? Does he even know what we do? Where is God? He won't do anything today that is on the lips of many and in the hearts of many, many more. But we come to fight. We come to say that God reigns. We come to say he lives. We come to stand against a culture that says anything goes. We come to stand against a culture that denies the power of God in marriage. We come to stand against a culture that would encourage violence among our young men. We come to stand against a culture that would take black history and truth telling out of our schools. We come to stand against a culture that would say a man can be a woman. We come to stand against a culture that says that black life doesn't matter, that we can have abortion. We come in the name of Jesus. We come in the name of love. We come because he reigns. And brothers and sisters, do not be afraid. He promises us the victory. We come to resist white supremacy. To raise our voices and say, black history is real and is true and must be taught in every school. Not just to black children, but to white children. In every school, people must know the truth that it is slavery that was the cause of the Civil War. Slavery, not just states' rights. Tell the truth. And as we act in love, as we serve God, he brings us joy. He brings us joy. He brings us joy. One of my favorite verses is Hebrews 12, 2. For the joy set before him he endured the cross for the joy set before him, scorning its shame. Nothing the world throws at us can possibly be worse than what they threw at our Savior. And he scorned its shame. Don't be afraid if they laugh at us. Don't be afraid if they think we're fools. Don't be afraid because he scorned the shame of the world. And we, we stand in his power. We are his. We are his, my brothers and sisters. And we scorn the shame of this world. And we know that the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. If we're living in love, if we're doing agape love, if we're living sanctified lives, if we're living as we ought, then we have the joy of the Lord. We have the joy of the Lord. As I drove over here this morning, Evangelist Wallace and Sister Elliot were just talking about the ministry of this church, the way people love and care for one another. That is the work of God. That is agape, serving one another. But you know the beautiful thing about the black church? We don't just serve one another, we serve our community. And they talked about the prison ministry because we are called by Jesus. He says, whatever you do for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do for me. Sociology and political scientist Ram Kanan at the University of Pennsylvania did a study of congregations here in Philadelphia. Uh, I think it was about 19, about two, the year 2000. And he found that black congregations, and he said congregations because he wasn't just looking at churches, but we know most of these congregations are churches. We're in Philadelphia after all. Most of these, congre these congregations were smaller than white congregations. They were poorer than white congregations because we tend to be poorer. There were more women than white congregations but we did more in serving residents in our neighborhoods than white congregations. 
$90 million a year in services to our neighborhoods. 90 million, and remember, this was in 2000, this is 2023. That's not $90 million now, that's over $100 million a year in services provided in our congregations. That is agape love to serve drug addicts. That is agape love to provide for our young people educational services. That is agape love to give clothing to the homeless. That is agape love. My sister-in-law lives here in Philadelphia and tragically lost her daughter at a very young age. And she took all of that pain and turned it into agape love because she every week goes out to feed the homeless in memory of her daughter and her daughter's commitment to the homeless. That is agape love. That is agape love. And Jesus says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. Yeah. It is when we obey him that we act in love. Yeah. It is when we do what he says. And I know that that is not always easy. Okay. I know there's temptation on the left hand and temptation on the right. Sexual temptation, temptation just to go along, to get along, temptation to fall in with this culture, temptation maybe to do a little something underhanded with the money. There is temptation that comes to us, but God calls us, and Jesus says, if we love him, we will keep his commandments. So we have to forgive that nasty neighbor. We have to forgive that person who betrayed us. We have to forgive though it hurts us. Young people, we have to follow mom's household rules. We have to work hard in school. We have to do what our teachers say. We have to avoid the kids who are going in the wrong direction. Brothers and sisters, we have to give generously to support the ministry of this church. We have to give so that we can be a witness to God. And we have to avoid that sexual sin that waits for us on every hand. Remember the story of Ananias and Saul? Can you imagine how terrified Ananias was when Paul, who had been sent out to arrest every Christian he could find, when Paul, who had been there when Stephen was martyred, is now blind and God says to Ananias, go to that man and minister to him. Go to that man, the killer of Christians, go to him and minister to him. But Ananias was obedient and acted in love despite the danger. And I'm here to call us to do the same that we stand up in the face of danger and hardship. Yeah. We reach out to the poor and the needy. We tell the truth in the face of opposition because we serve a living God. And in our suffering, God brings us joy. James 1, 2 and 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. God gives us joy in the storm. You don't have to wait till you're on the other side. He gives us joy in the storm. We praise him now in the middle of hardship. We praise him now. When Paul and Silas were in prison, they had been whipped. Their backs were torn open. Their hands and feet were in stocks. They couldn't even move into a comfortable position. They were singing and praising so hard that an earthquake struck. They were singing and praising so hard that the Holy Spirit came down. We praise him in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the hardship, in the middle of suffering. We praise him now. We don't wait. We praise him now. We praise him now, brothers and sisters. Because the word says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. This true love, this agape love, I'm not talking about a warm feeling. I'm not talking about nice words. I'm talking about living out love. That true agape love when Jesus says, no greater love 
is there than this to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And he showed us the way. That agape love is what we are called to do. Amen. And God is faithful to help us when we act in love, when we serve, and when we resist Satan. He is faithful to help us. Maybe it will be a miracle. Maybe it will be the kind of miracle that Elijah saw when he raised the widow's son. You know, here was a woman helping the prophet, and yet her son falls sick and dies. And she says, what kind of, what? Does that happen to us sometimes, brothers and sisters? You're in the middle of doing the right thing when hardship rains down on you? But God gave her a miracle, a sign of his power, a sign of his love, a sign of his presence because her son was raised to life, brought back to life. But maybe he will do what he did for Paul. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1, that he is the God of all comfort, that he comforts us in the middle of the suffering, that he comforts us even before he changes the circumstances, that he comforts us and strengthens us even in the midst of all of our hardship. I have a friend, you know, she has grown children, and mothers, you know how it is. Sometimes your children grow up and it's like they forget you, they don't call you, they don't come to see you. And she was feeling very forgotten and very alone. And she was praying to God to rebuke that son of hers and his wife because they'd forgotten her. She was really angry. She was supposed to give her daughter-in-law a gift and she's like, I'm not giving this gift to that girl. But you know, as she prayed, God said, don't you see this is an opportunity for you? This is an opportunity for you to praise me in the midst of hardship. This is an opportunity for you to see that I love you no matter what the world says. This is an opportunity for you to raise my name, an opportunity you won't have in heaven because there'll be no more hardship. Seize the opportunity now, praise me now. She was completely transformed. Her son hadn't called, they hadn't done anything different, but her whole mindset shifted into one of praise and worship. When she saw her son and daughter-in-law, she embraced them. She gave the gift because God comforts us in the middle of suffering, my brothers and sisters. He comforts us in the middle of suffering. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. So be bold, be brave, be obedient. Rejoice when God gives us a victory. Rejoice before he gives us a victory. Rejoice when it seems impossible. Rejoice when our friends let us down. Rejoice in the salvation of the Lord. Rejoice in the joy of the Lord. Rejoice for God is our strength. And Jesus, he is our closest friend. He is our brother, the lover of our soul. Jesus, Jesus will fight our battles for us. Jesus, Jesus will give us a victory. Jesus, he'll never leave us. Jesus, he'll never forsake us. He is the very example of agape love. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.